God bless everybody. Let's give the Lord a big hand clap of praise right there in your house today and those that are in the building today. What a moment, what a moment. I live to worship you. I have found that to be true. The more we have been shut in and uh, on lockdown, so to speak, house arrest, I've just found out the greatest way I can pass my time and do what I need to do is worshiping God. Thank you, praise team. Thank you, Holly and Demarcus. Oh, Lord, the Spirit of the Lord is here. We got to get back to church, folks. God is here in a very powerful, powerful way. And I feel like I'm preaching to us double stacked in here today. But let me make a couple of announcements before we get into the Word of the Lord. Pay attention to Facebook and your texts from us. The next two Wednesday nights, we're getting ready to open up church full blast. The next two Wednesday nights, we will be having a gathering, but it's going to be a sanitizing party. We're going to wipe everything down in the church and just uh, really, really go over everything and get it in a lot of tip-top shape in some areas and uh, clean, 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 sanitize, sanitize, and make it real pretty. So if you'd like to come out and volunteer and help with that, this will start about 6.30, 7 o'clock. We'll have everything ready. We're going to do that two nights in a row. And uh, let me make an announcement. If any men want to help out with the yard work, come by on Thursday afternoon. We, we'll do some trimming that day, okay? And we've done so much in the yard, it's easy now. So just bring a mower or your weed eater if you want to, a little more. That's all you need. Or we have weed eaters here. And then we're getting ready to kick back off here in a couple of weeks, wide open. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. Sister Holly will be bringing the message. But from now on, uh, Sunday mornings will be full out worship, full out preaching, and we will be back on regular schedule right away. I'm just going ahead and making that announcement about two weeks. We'll be back and gathering in. And if you're comfortable doing that, you come on to church. If you want to wear your mask, you wear your mask. If you want to sit five or six feet from somebody, you do that. But we're going to do what we're supposed to do. But I thank God for our governor of the state of Texas letting us go ahead and have church. And now's a good time for us to start praying. Lord, just back that old virus on out of Texas. Amen. And we're going to do that. So good to see. I see a few more faces here today. I'm really excited. So if you can remember those things and... This is how we're going to give our offerings today. Uh, if you're in this building, I'm going to point Molly the usher. If you, if you just give your offerings to Molly, and then she'll get it in the right place. And some have already done that this morning. But Or you can go back uh, to the foyer, and you can give online back there to our machines. And y'all know the drill. But then after service, after we get through preaching here in just a little bit, you can go back to our website. It's www.npcforme.com and you can go to the give button and give your offer there or if you're a text giver you know how to do that already or if you like to give on the square you can come by the church and do that a lot of people do that through the week and on Sundays you know they, they like to bring that with them or if you are already working the app We'll do more on the app when we're live because it takes a little explanation. But once you get that app downloaded, you can watch sermons, the church schedule, announcements. Everything's on that app, and it's so nice, and I, I appreciate that. So you can do that. We're not government-sponsored. This church operates off the free will and generous hearts of men and women here that share their finances with the Lord. And I have found out it's better to give than to receive. Right before we open our Bibles, get into the Word, I've got to give a shout out to all of the serve teams. Yesterday, there was a huge funeral in this church, and maybe I shouldn't say that publicly, but it was. And then the serve team in our event center, people come over and clean that thing up, got it in tip-top shape, and they had a meal, and thank everybody for volunteering and bringing food for the uh, Ludovici and the Goulahan family and all the others that are connected with that that I don't know your last names, but I know you're all kin. It's a big, big group, and I want to thank everybody. I want to thank the people that helped out with the clothes donations this week that we get. These are brand new clothes. We've we've got them. They're all over the world. It's just it just they got shipped out and taken places. And thank you for that. And then on Fridays, 
we deliver food to the seniors, the shut-in and military. And somebody asked me, he said, what are you going to do about that? That is going to keep going. We will tweak it just a little bit. There will be a buffet. You can come serve yourself. Or if you can't get here, we will still bring your food to you. And that's something that's a ministry we developed. And we're doing a lot of other great things. But uh, it's always good to kind of give somebody a good meal along the way. And I want to thank, I want to thank everybody that helps make that possible. Um, Sandy Brown and all her team that comes up here on Thursday night. Uh, you know who I'm talking to. If I start naming names beside her, I would get in trouble. I'd forget somebody. But we thank you. And the best is yet to come. We've never seen nothing like we're going to see. This is the beginning, the preparation for us to be the leaders in our community. So get ready for great things. Praise God. Well, that's enough announcements this morning. And let's go up to our Bibles and turn to 1 Samuel chapter 30. We're going to read probably 8 or 10 scriptures throughout my message this morning. And uh, I'm going to ask you to help me in just a little while in this message, Larry. And so, but I won't embarrass you, okay? I promise you. It's nothing crazy. <laughs> nothing crazy. So, but I do need your help just a little while. But 1 Samuel chapter 30. And turn there. And I'm going to read my text in just a moment. But I want to talk to you this morning about how to defeat ambushes or Yes, you can feet, defeat an ambush, a surprise attack. I think this deal we've been living with has been a major surprise attack for us. And I don't like it, but God has kept us. And I realize, Lord, all things work together for the good of them that love the Lord and called according to his purpose. And I realize what the devil meant for evil, the Lord can turn it around and make it for good. Yes, yes. I hear a lot of bad reports, but I'm looking for that good report. Whose report will you believe this morning? Come on, look at me in that camera, wherever you're at, around your table, in your bed, in your pajamas, on your couch, looking at your computer, on your phone, watching this broadcast. God can take this thing and make it very good. And I believe he's done that. That's why I don't think we've seen anything yet. Father, we ask you to bless your word right now. Touch all of us. Give me preaching graces. Give me a special anointing today. Help us. Be with us. Take care of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You can defeat this ambush. I was thinking, God never operates in the reverse unless he's getting you ready for more. And when all of this shut down, can't have church, shelter in place, quarantine, social distancing, terms I've never heard of, I felt ambushed. I felt like I had been sucker punched. Our church was doing better than it ever done before. Our daycare had more kids than it ever had. Everything was clicking along here. We were wide open, putting finishing touches on a long building project. And all of a sudden, we came to a complete halt. In that first week, I didn't panic, but I headed that way. And then I caught myself, and I went into prayer, and the Lord said, it's going to be okay. And I realized... When we get back together, what the devil thought to discourage us, stifle us, stop us, shut us down, lose everything, we're going to come out ahead. We're going to be better off. I want you to pull with me on that. I want you to know that. So you can defeat this ambush. Listen, listen. We have all had seasons, days, Moments of being ambushed. Moments where we've been tricked. Made a deal by a con artist or a shyster. Took our money. 
We always have to watch my mother. She answers her phone, and these people that make all those phone calls, they can suck her in if she's not careful. So my sister has to go back and check her bank account and put payments to be stopped on some things because she gets tricked, surprised. And we, we've said it to ourselves, well, I just really, really didn't plan this. This is not what I signed up for. I didn't plan for this round of chemotherapy. I didn't plan on going to uh, dialysis week after week. I didn't plan on having to go get all these doctors' checkups, 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 test, 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 sticking needles in my veins, in and out of the hospital. I didn't plan this. It's not what I signed up for. But do you ever feel like you're watching a Gomer Pyle movie? Surprise, surprise, surprise. And here comes Sergeant Carter with bad news. Somebody hollering and screaming at you. <laughs> surprise, surprise, surprise. I didn't see this coming. And sometimes our first reaction is, oh no, my family's destroyed. God is fixing to put our families back together. You hear me? I believe some of our first visitors and some of our first fill up the church again is going to be with our families. And then we tell ourselves, oh no, what about my future? What about my contracts? What about my job? What about my business? What about my work? God's got this. Everything's going to be okay. And then that old question that gets us all, oh, my finances, my money. How am I going to pay my bills? How am I going to get this project done around the house I want to do? I was wanting a new living room suit. I was wanting a new washer and dryer. I was wanting to remodel my house. What am I going to do? You hang on. It'll be better than what you was going to do. I've never seen God back up on nothing. And it might just cost you less. Then we ask ourselves, oh, no, I can't see my friends. Hey, look, everybody sees our friends now on Facebook. You see everybody you went to grade school with. So that's not really an excuse, okay? Sometimes you don't want to see them. We've all changed. We've all aged a little bit. But then my friends, my family, my future, my finances, life has been ambushed, been attacked. Ambush means this, to make a surprise attack. How many, said, how, how many of you watching in the building, have you ever had a surprise attack? Yes. Mm -hmm. Somebody at work lie on you, jealous of your position, stab you in the back, won't, won't you fire and they get your job? A surprise attack. An ambush comes from a concealed position. Very, very suddenly, unexpected, unwelcome set of circumstances and questions about our lives. We've been ambushed. But we're going to talk about how to beat an ambush today. We're going to talk about how to beat a surprise attack today. So I'm telling you, if you're still rocking and rolling and reeling from this old ambush and shut down and shut in and can't hug nobody, can't shake nobody's hand, and people wearing masks everywhere. We're going to defeat that in the powerful name of Jesus. Now, I want you to go down with me to 1 Samuel chapter 30 and verse 6. I'm reading my text now. This is good. This is good. And David was greatly distressed. Have you ever been there? Lord, I got some problems today. We've all had those days. And David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him. We're going to kill you, buddy. We're going to whoop you. We're going to throw rocks at you. We're going to get rid of you. You have messed us up this time. It was not a good day for David. The people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved. Every man for his sons and for his daughters. Everybody was sad. 
Everybody was sad. It was horrible. David and his army had been out fighting to save their families, their cattle, their children, their grandchildren, and they come back home and didn't see nothing but fires. No family was there. They had been kidnapped and took somewhere else, and they blamed David. Have you ever been blamed for something that was not your fault? Well, uh, well, uh, hey, listen to me a minute. Hold on. I, I didn't do that. I promise you. I didn't mean to say that. I did not say that. I didn't say nothing close to that. And then you got to start backtracking and trying to get everything straightened out that you don't even know what you're straightening out because it's an ambush. It's a surprise. It catches you off guard. Mm-hmm. But David, can you put your name in there? But Ed, but Stacy, but Larry, but Aaron, but Demarcus, but Bobby, put your name in there. Wherever you're watching, put your name in there. But David encouraged himself in the Lord his God. If you've been ambushed and everybody is sad around you and they want to blame you and kill you and get rid of you, you better learn to encourage yourself. Now I'm telling you something in this virus, they got you sitting at the house and you can't come to church for another few days, you better learn to encourage yourself. Shout around your kitchen table. Read your Bible. Put on some praise music. Turn your house into a sanctuary. Encourage yourself. I'm going to encourage myself today. I'm going to encourage myself today. I'm not going to let the devil's surprise attack get to me. Okay, let's go back up to verse 1 and 2. And it came to pass when David and his men were come to Ziklag on the third day that the Amalekites had invaded the south. Okay, have you ever had an invasion? Somebody took over your stuff? And Ziklag, smitten Ziklag and burned it with fire. I mean, they devastated their homes where they lived. Everything was just a mess and took the women captive that were therein. They didn't kill nobody, either great or small, but carried them away and they went on away. Their whole family, the whole community, the whole town, the whole kinfolks, everybody they love was kidnapped. When you come up on it, write this down. When you come up on a ambush, you're doing good, everything's working, your tires are armor out on your car, you just got through the car wash, you looking good, you styling and profiling, not a problem in the world, just driving around drinking your good cup of Starbucks, and all of a sudden the engine blows up and you can't go nowhere. That's kind of what happened to David that day. They had came in from victory. They were tired. They wanted to rest. They wanted to probably go home and their wives cook them a good meal, but it didn't happen. When you have an ambush, a surprise, a tragedy, a horrible thing happen in your life, evaluate very, very quickly your loss and develop a future plan of recovery. I'm going to say that again. When everything goes wrong, the bottom falls out. Nothing's working right. No matter what age you are, you got a problem. Maybe you elf on a test at school. You didn't pass a class. You got in trouble. You're in sack. Or maybe you got laid off for two or three days. Whatever your deal is, Evaluate that quickly and then start encouraging yourself 
because nobody else is going to encourage you. Let me read verse 6 again. David was greatly distressed. The people spake of stoning him. For the soul of all the people was embittered, every man because his sons and because of his daughters. But then this translation says, but David strengthened himself in the Lord. The right response. David turned to God when everything was sideways, messed up. He encouraged himself. Listen, I'm my greatest cheerleader. Everybody don't always like me every Sunday morning. Sometimes I get on subjects that are sensitive. Sometimes I just don't mean to get on a sensitive subject, but I'll say something politically incorrect. Sometimes I'll say something that is unfiltered. I ain't talking about talking bad, but it's just, you just don't say it. And you don't mean to do that. It just slips out. Sometimes you will stick your foot in your mouth and you will embarrass yourself. And when you do that, you encourage yourself and you be your best cheerleader, you be your best motivator, you be your best promoter, and you give yourself a pep talk, and you may have fell flat on your face, you may feel distressed, you may feel discouraged, but you give yourself a, pest, a pep talk, and then you got to take action after you do that. You talk to yourself a while. You can do it. You can get up from here. You can get back in that pulpit again. You can sing again. You can take another offering. You can go back to work again. You can get a better job. Your company may have shut down, but God might want you to start the company over. Amen. But then, point number two. Then David, after he encouraged himself, he took faith, action, and he started praying. Verse 7. Let's go to verse 7. And David said to Abathar the priest, it's important that you get a word from God. It's important you get a word from God's word during this time. I've got some things. I wish I could tell you I got some great revelation when this was going in, how it was going in, where it was going in, and all of that stuff. But really all the Lord's told me, he said, now see, you can slow down. You don't have to live your life in warp speed and rushing all the time. You do a lot of things you can do without. I believe the word that I'm getting, you can have a little bit simpler life. Step back a few years. You don't have to go as fast. You don't have to eat all your meals out. You, you don't have to do that. Slow down. Enjoy your children. It, it's, I don't know how y'all feel, but sometimes... I feel guilty if I sit down. I'm on my feet all the time, and I feel guilty if I sit down. I feel guilty if I just go out there and sit in the yard and watch kids play. It's like the Lord has ministered me in that area. He says, slow down, man. You know, this is my stuff. It's my work. I'm taking care of you. You're doing better than you've ever done. You ain't even having church. You ain't even passing the plate. You ain't even doing this. You know, we get to worry about those things. He said, look how good I'm taking care of you. Why don't you lean into me? Why don't you trust me? So that's what I'm hearing. So I'm hearing this word. David said to Abathar the priest, I'm being like son, bring near to me, I pray thee, the ephod, a place of prayer, the church, things of the church. And Abathar brought the ephod near to David. Listen, it's important we get back to church. It's important we pray our way through when they open us up wide open and you got a choice to do what you want to, yeah, you want to come to church now because they're telling you you can't, but they're going to open this thing up. Everybody can come to church the next week that wants to. And uh, then the week after that, we're going to be open wide open. So it's important we get back to church, the assembly of God's people. So he went to church and he got to ephod. And he had to have an answer. He went to church brokenhearted. He went to church when they were wanting to kill him. He went to church when everybody was against him. He went to church when it looked like there was no hope. He went to church when he didn't know if he walked out of the church doors, they was going to start stoning him. 
but he went to church for wisdom and guidance and God gave it to him. And the people that were wanting to kill him and stone him and were mad and sad and they weren't just mad and sad, they were hungry, weary and tired. But God gave them one more strength. He gave them one more shot of energy and that's how you defeat an ambush. You gotta go when you can't go. You gotta go when you're in pain. You gotta go when you grieve. You gotta go when everybody else is against you. Get up and fight again. He prayed for wisdom and guidance. Now, number three, his prayer. Okay, encourage yourself, get to church, get a word, pray. His prayer led to a physical answer and a physical action. Sometimes, if we go have church and have miracles and lay hands on the sick and baptize folks, it takes physical action. We have not quit doing that. We have not, I'm just wondering who's gonna get the first miracle? Who's gonna get the first cancer healed? Who's gonna get the first diabetes healed? Who's gonna get the first bone grow back together? Who's gonna get saved first? Prayer led to a physical answer. Verse number eight, and David inquired at the Lord saying, shall I pursue after this troop? This is how you stop an ambush. You stop them. He was praying, Lord, I've been fighting, but do I need another fight? Shall I pursue after this troop? Sometimes to defeat an ambush, you gotta defeat a whole bunch of stuff. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I overtake them? And he answered, pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them without fail. Oh, this is what I like. Without fail. I'm gonna say it again. Without fail. Let me go over here. I'm gonna say it again. Without fail. If you've lost your wife, if you've lost your children, if you've lost your money, if you've lost your house, if your cows, your horses, your cattle, your goats, your sheep, your ox, your dogs, your cats, whatever else, pets you got, whatever kind of livestock you got, if you've lost everything, the Lord has a word for you. He is saying, get up, overtake, and you will recover everything. Hallelujah. Let me tell you what the devil meant for evil. The Lord's going to turn it around and he's going to give us good at the end of the day and what we feel like we've lost, we're going to recover all of it, all of it, not part of it, all of it. And I'm not going to shut down, shut up, back up, move aside until I got all my stuff back. Hallelujah. I'm getting my stuff back. The devil's trying to tell me, you lost 50 kids, paying kids out of your daycare. How are you going to recover? My Bible tells me that I will recover. I will be better. You might be sick today. You might be in a host of doctor's appointments, but I'm going to tell you something. God is going to heal your body. He's going to make you well, and you will recover all. You will recover all. Oh, hallelujah. I'm getting my stuff back. Don't you mess with me. Don't you mess with me. I'm coming back, praise God. Now, physical answers take belief and acting in faith. Verse 9. He got a word. You got to get with it once you get a word. Faith isn't lazy. Faith don't sleep all day. Faith don't go on a vacation all day. Faith is action. Faith is kingdom action. So David went. He, look, they got back with him. When you hear a word of God and a word from God, the folks that was wanting to kill you, stone you, wipe you out, will turn around because they know you've heard something. So David went and the 600 men that were with him came to the brook Besor, where those that were left behind stayed. Now, act in faith. Verse five. 
They got together. Started praising God. I mean, 45. Verse 10. What was David going to do? Not cross the creek? Not get over the first obstacle? Not tear down the first barrier? No. But David pursued. He and 400 men for 200 abode behind, which were so faint that they could not go over the brook the soil. Listen, when you start defeating an ambush, maybe you're too tired to go any further. There will be people help you get your stuff back. You might not have the energy. You may be with a lung condition. It may be in realistic terms. Better you stay home for a few more weeks. But we're going to pray, strengthen your body. We're going to pray your immune system is not compromised. You might be, not be able to go fight that next battle and bring your stuff back home, but we're going to help you recover everything. We're going we're to obey verse 10. We're going to get there, and if you can't go, you sit there and you get rested, you get well, we're going to come back and get you when you're better, but we're going to have a surprise this time in the opposite direction. We're going to have your cows, your goats, your sheep, your horses, your friends, and we're going to bring them all back to you. Hallelujah. So they got up and they went. But David pursued. Say that with me. I'm a pursuer. I'm a pursuer. Now, David pursued. You fight when you're tired. You fight when you're sad. You fight when you're heartbroken. Molly Salinas is here today. She had a miracle in her body. She was almost, I hate to use the word, but she... She like to lost it, her life in a horrible car accident. Bones crushed all over her body. Arm crushed so bad she couldn't use it. But the power of God hit in this church one night. And I watched her. She started marching. She grabbed her other arm and took her arm. That, that car wreck had smushed. Doctors said we can never fix it. You can never use it. It was horrible. It was horrible had surgeries, but something happened. She took that arm and began to raise that feeble arm, and she got healed that night. They were able to fix that arm. Amen. She's got yes. full use of this arm. I don't want her to hit me with that arm. I'm going to tell you what. God touched that arm, and he's still touching. But sometimes you just got to get in the presence of God and give it all you got. And I watched that, and I'll never forget it. Where I caught it, it was back there in front of that sound booth. And I watched her walking and praising God. It, she didn't have to do that. She didn't have to do that. She could have just wore a sling, held it like this. But you can get everything you have lost. When we begin to get on a transition, our life has been a transition, but then God got us where he wanted it. I had a prophecy that said, you're going to get back everything you've lost. And buddy, I didn't mean just back a few physical things. The way I interpreted that, everything I lost plus the future prophets that I lost during that time. And God has been good. So the right response, encouraging yourself, motivating yourself, leads to the right place of recovery. Come here, help me a second, Larry. Come here, help me. Okay, go back to verse number six. Go back to verse number six. We got to look at this again in a little different light. Come up here and stand by me, Larry. I love this man. <laughs> I'm not going to embarrass you, okay? <laughs> We're not going to pour no water on you or nothing, all right? And so we're the same age. Don't he look good? Oh. And David was greatly distressed. Have you ever been there? Yeah, we have. We've all had stuff happen to us. And when you got something happen to you, you got to let that stuff go. If you don't forgive, it's going to keep replaying, replaying, replaying in your mind. Right. And probably... What's being replayed in your mind, the person that you're seeing in your mind ain't even thinking a thought about you. But you're still attached to that offense. So forgive it, let it go today. All right, let me, let me read some more. And David was greatly distressed. You know, Larry, I'm sure you've had some bad days, but I ain't never really heard you go negative. Now, me and Molly might get on somebody every now and then, but, 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 no. <laughs> but, 
You don't go that way. I just thought about that. Never have. Never have heard it. For the people spake of stone in him because his soul. All the people was grieved. Every man for his sons, for his daughters, and rightfully so. You may have a reason this morning to be sad, but don't stay sad. It ain't going to do you no good to grieve. But David encouraged, another translation said, strengthened himself. Okay, his response was right. Come over here by me, Larry. When you encourage and you strengthen yourself, you fasten yourself to God. I want you, no matter where you're at, where you're at in this audience, watching by TV, watching by Facebook, watching by Internet, I want you to physically fasten yourself to God. He fastened himself to God. What happens? Discouragement comes when you try to pull away from God and try to get separated. See, I'm off over here on my own now. I don't have no help. But see, when I'm over here and I'm fasting to God, I've got help. I've got everything he's got when I'm fasting to him. See, Larry's my friend. If I need to know something about the old car I'm working on, I'm fixing up a car that I really enjoy, and he's, he's coached me along the way, and I'm asking God to get me one like I sold that you helped me get. And so, and don't tell my wife, of course, she's probably watching, okay? But anyway, but when I'm fasting to Larry, I got everything he's got. If I need something fixed, I can go to his shop. If I need to know something about electricity, I can call him. And my son's back there on the camera. I've called him before and said, how do we do this, Larry? Because he's a master electrician. He said, tell him to do this, this. What happened? I've got his knowledge now. I might not have his skill, but I'm fastened to him, see. But when I pull away, I... I don't have nobody to call. I don't have nobody to talk to. How do I get this to run? I don't have nobody to talk to. Where's the best place to get this fixed? But when I'm fastened to him, see, we're like a chain length, okay? So I want you, thank you, Larry. I want you to fasten yourself to God today. I want you to make Jesus the Lord of your life this morning. If you're not saved and you're watching, you're with your family and they've got you hemmed up this morning, I don't want you to be separated from God. I don't want that old devil to pull you away. I don't want the things and the cares of the world to block you from church, to make you bitter, to keep you upset. Don't believe the lies of Satan this morning. All he does is want to Pull you away from God. But David, that day, when it was bad, horrible, and sad, he pushed his way through that ambush, and he fastened himself to God. He took courage. He took strength. Yes, he was discouraged. Yes, he was ambushed. Yes, everything got burnt down. But when he got to church again, when he got to the preach again, when he got to hear the word of the Lord again, he got his gusto back. He got his enthusiasm back. He got his fight back. And he became a winner again. And he got his strength back. You may not like what's going on around you, but get back up. Fasten yourself to God. Let me tell you something. Ambushes are not permanent. Permanent. They are irreversible and they're not irreversible. You can change an ambush and you can reverse an ambush, okay? They are irreversible. I will defeat the ambush right now. Hallelujah. Defeat. Recover. From this place of pain, suffering, sorrow, questions. I'm getting better today. I have courage. I'm defeating this ambush. Don't be paralyzed. Win the fight. Yep. Win the fight. Next week we're going to talk about some other things of ambush, about waiting on the Lord. Total different way to defeat an ambush. But listen, no, I'm not talking next week. My wife is. It's Mother's Day. Everybody watching by camera, phone, computer, iPad, tablet, if you got it on your television set. Don't live another moment discouraged. Don't live another day discouraged. Don't live another day feeling like you're defeated. Get to the house of God. Find a place of prayer. Get a fresh word from God. Reactivate your faith. And go back after what's been stolen from you. 
You can do it. If you don't know the Lord today, give Jesus your heart. If you've never repented of your sins, if you've never been baptized in water, make a decision this morning. Sitting at your table, driving in your car. You might be just scrolling and found a strange church and something got your attention. Give your heart to the Lord today. It's the best way to live. I'm not nothing special. I've just learned that God loves me and he loves you. Give it to him today. Make a new start. He can defeat any addiction. He can defeat any habit. If your marriage is in jeopardy, if your kids are running loose, things in your life are out of control, and you don't know what tomorrow holds, God will take care of you. Consider the lilies. Consider the sparrow. He'll take care of you this morning. Yes, we've all been ambushed, tricked, and surprised. We've all had bad news. We've all had those crying and sleepy nights. But God will take care of it. Horrible phone calls. A child in jail. Rushed to the emergency room. Car wrecks. Kid breaks a bone. Cuts his foot. Hand, got to get stitches. Bumps a head, got a concussion. Whatever it may be. Give God your heart today. I want to pray for you before we leave this morning. Father, we thank you this morning. Oh, in the mighty name of Jesus, everybody watching, those that are in the house today, Lord, we're doing the best we can do. I know we're going to improve on our best. But I pray for everybody that's had a surprise attack. Let it pop in our brain that this ambush is not permanent. This ambush is not irreversible. I can change this. I can do better. If you're not saved today, just ask the Lord to save you right now. Make Jesus the Lord of your life. Ask him to forgive you of all your sins. Then get a good church and get back there when they open the doors. Well, Lord, I pray for everybody here. Anybody watching today that might have a sickness in their body, pray you heal them and make them well, make them whole. Take care of our families and our children. There's another prayer I want to pray, Lord, is for all of our seniors that didn't get to walk the aisle. I pray that I know they're sad and depressed. They've worked all their life. Some of them really struggled just to graduate. Went to summer school two or three times and taking extra credits and tutors and all this stuff. That was me, Lord. I wasn't a valedictorian like my wife. It was hard for me to graduate. And after all that work I put in, if they had told me I couldn't graduate, I'd have probably been so sad. And Lord, there's a lot of kids out there that worked hard to get that diploma. I pray you help them. Help the mamas and the daddies. Just give them a lot of graduation presents. Lord, I pray you help us. We have been ambushed. We're kind of laid out right now. But we're going to get up. We're going to find the ephod. And we're going to pursue, overtake, and cover all. In Jesus' name, amen. So we're closing this service. Go back to the website. This is when we'll receive our offering. Please go and hit the give now. Or you can go to the text, the app. Or you can give online. And we appreciate your giving. And I want to say we're North Point strong. People have gave. They supported their church through this. And God has kept his hand on us. And I thank you. I thank you, I thank you, and, and I thank all of those. This week will be a big week for us. We're going to be doing a lot of work. We've stayed busy doing what we can. We've gave thousands of meals out, and I thank you for that. And it's just been a beautiful thing. And God bless you, and we will see you next Sunday, but everything will be live praise and worship. My wife, you don't want to miss, you don't want to miss her Mother's Day message and it's going to be wonderful. And anybody that wants to come to church can come next week. And then the following week, we're going to be wide open, wide open, wide open. God bless you. Have a great week. Remember, stay strong, stay encouraged, find the church, be blessed. And remember this, 
you've got the gift of grit. Welcome, North Point Nation. We are so glad that you are here with us this morning. Pastor gave an amazing message, so I hope that you took notes and that you go over and look at what Pastor has talked about with us. I just wanna come real quickly and just share with you three ways that you can give electronically. The first way is by going to our church app. You can go to the app by Ministry One. Once you're inside, go to the giving tab and select give. There you can give by credit or debit card, safely and securely. You can also go to our website at www.npc4me.com. There, just go to the Give tab and select Give Now. You can select a fund and how you would like to give, and it's safe and secure. And the last way you can give is by text. You can text to the number 817-241-2202. And there you can select your fund and the way and the amount that you would like to give. However you give, we try to make it easy and convenient for you. We thank you so much for how you've given to our church. Our giving has been so strong, and we thank you for supporting the vision of North Point Church. Together, we will and can do more.